Hi, I'm Paul from Testata Services, and this video is walking through Load Runner 2020 Service Pack 2, and it's focusing on the DevWeb protocol. So this might be a first look at DevWeb, and it might be a first look at uh, Load Runner 2020 R2, which was only released uh, a week or so back. So uh, let's let's get into it. So the script that I'm going to show you is signing up to a website. So this is what the script looks like. We just click on here. This is Load Runner 2020 um, R2. And if I just click on this little icon here, you can see 2020 SP2. It's going to fire up the script. Now to show you what the script is actually doing um, and for it to make sense, before I step through each of these lines, I'm going to show you uh, on Postman what it's doing because it's a bit easier to visualize. So the first thing the script is going to do is it's going to randomly fetch an identity. So this is the one I've just fetched randomly for Joseph uh, Hengshi. Hen I can't pronounce that name. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, do the first stage of a sign up request. In this case, it's going to pr produce a screen like this with uh, fields for an email, birth date, uh, address, gender, given name, family name, and a password. Next thing, we're going to clear any old emails for that user, and we're going to submit the details that we'd fetched. So the details that we fetched are all of these, and when we've submitted them, we'll get a response back, a web page back that looks like this. We then find the email, we fetch the email, and in this case, this is the email, and you can see here it says your verification code is 890416. And then we're going to submit that. Now, just to show you that this is real and it's not fudged in any way, I'm going to show you the Cognito sign up screen. So let's go back to the person we chose and let's get that person's email address, uh, which is um, Joseph, this one here, copy. And we'll go and show you my uh, AWS console page. Uh, so we've got 50,000 odd uh, users signed up here. And let's replace that and let's hit enter. And we've got a, um, today is the 10th of July. Let's just check, yeah, 10th of July at 9, um, uh, 9 19 a.m and this is utc so you can see it's uh, been fetched and uh, so the the identity is in there and it's unconfirmed once i submit that last request here go back to submit verification code thank you for submitting so that's a good sign now if i refresh this now it says emails confirmed. So we can see that we actually really did get that uh, person's details and we signed them up. Let's just double check. One Dunn Street, Warrigal, birth date 14th of July, 1998. Let's go back here. Uh, one Dunn Street, Warrigal, um, 1998, 14th and uh, July. So we can see that that's correct. So that's what the process is. So now that we've done the process, let's look at the script. So what the Load Runner script is doing is it's setting some defaults first for um, the, the actual headers. Then it's getting this random identity. So it's fetching from get random person and it's using these extractors. Now an extract is a nice way of fetching that JSON response back. So it gets the UID, email address, uh, e the physical address, a password, which was password four in this case, and all these values by actually grabbing the JSON response, which is nice. The way it does transactions is it says um, uh, you define a transaction and you give it a name and then you start it and then when you're done, you finish it. And what we are next doing is constructing the uh, email, sorry, the um, date of birth as a, uh, a more traditional formatted field. And then we're doing the next request. Now this next request is a web request. Uh, it's a get, 
and it's passing in a client ID to Cognito. Now this is a production website. Um, and it's sending all of the other um, query parameters that it needs to. And it's fetching from that a CSRF from the response. And it's doing that by looking at the left boundary and a right boundary, and it's grabbing this CSRF field. Then it's clearing a message out. And the reason it's doing the clear message is that we want to make sure that the next email that we get for this user from that from domain of testdata.email is the one with the correct code in it, the verification code that we're going to submit. And when we've got that, uh, we then uh, do this request here, which is the sign up request. And we uh, submit that and we put in here all of the details to fill out that form. So the address, the gender, given name, family name, a password, and so on. Now it's getting these from in this case, web response one extractors address. So let's go back and look at web response one. That's just up here. Web response one is this uh, request for a, um, an HTTP get, and the extractor uh, had in it all of these uh, extractions, and address, for example, was the Java response, the, the JSON response, sorry, with dot address. So that's, that's how it gets these values. So it gets those values, and then the next thing it's doing is it's going to have up to 50 checks for an email with a one second pause in between each. And it's going to go and it's going to do a get message, and it will look for, in the response, a verification code, your verification code is. If it's got that, it'll be happy and it'll then proceed on to the next step. And the next step will actually submit that verification code and it'll do it in here. So you can see verification code is here. Yep, so it's submitting that. So now if I run this as a load test, let's push play. And I, I've just pushed start. So we're going to have 50 users running. And let's look at the transaction response times. And let's just reformat this a little bit. So you can see this looks a bit different to the older load runner uh, version. And we can see we've got, if I sort it, um, get random identity is taking an average of 64 milliseconds. Then the sign up links taking 30 milliseconds. With clear emails, that's averaging about uh, 170 milliseconds. We're submitting details about a half a second. Email latency, so it's actually reading the latency from the email um, get request. And um, we're submitting the response. Now, while we're doing this, this test is running for about a minute. We can look over here at transactions passed. And we can see that we're doing about seven or eight uh, per second. For 50 users, that's not bad. But the problem is that we're waiting for an email uh, to be caught uh, each time. So when we submit the details, uh, Cognito, AWS's Cognito service has to send an email verification out and we then have to catch that and we're checking it, we're polling it. And that's not really an ideal way to do things. So to improve on that, what we'll do instead you can see the test is finishing. What we're going to do to improve on that is we're going to split this script into two halves. One that does the uh, submission, sorry, the, the fetching of the data and submitting the request to sign up. And then another script that will actually just read the emails and then process them. And that means we're not doing any extra waiting. So in this minute, we're nearly done and we have processed about 600 um, requests, so 600 signups, which is pretty good. So let's just um, stop this for now because we don't really need to, to wait. Oh, might have to just wait. Um, we go two to go and when it's done, I might even sort of give it a bit of a kick if it doesn't stop soon. This one's, oh there we go, it's finished. Great. All right, so that's, that's done. Let's flip across now to split scripts. 
Now, this is really what I'd say is best practice. So I'm going to show you the part one script first. Now, I'm going through this quite quick. You might want to just rewind the video and have a look and understand what we're doing. So this script is doing a few steps. It's fetching this random person, getting the extracting the details, it's building the date, and then it's um, submitting this sign up request to get the form, and it's clearing out um, any emails. So so far, it's pretty well the same script. But what it's doing next is it's submitting the form. And immediately after submitting the form, that's like the first script, it's doing two new steps. The first is it's subscribing to an email group so that we can catch emails for that group. And it's saving the CSRF against the identity. Now, I won't go into that in detail. If you look at the screen there, you can see it because I don't want to use up our time on that. And then the second script is it's going to pop emails. So instead of polling for emails, it's going to just fetch any that happen to already be there. And in this case, the first thing it does is it does this pop subscribed email. And then from that, it's checking that it's got a verification code and it's working out uh, the UID and the email address. It's if it's got one, so it, there might not be any popped emails, but if it's got an email, the next thing it's going to do is it's going to, um, uh, what's it going to do? Uh, it's going to work out what the CSRF is so that it can submit that in a fully different session to the original session. Um, so that means it's tricking AWS Cognito into thinking you're the same user uh, continuing the sign-up process. And it wants to get the actual latency from the message. So it's actually having to do an extra call to get that latency. It then gets the latency. Now it's saving that latency as a transaction. So it's, the latency is in um, uh, milliseconds. Sorry, it's in seconds. Uh, but the response times in dev web are in milliseconds. So it's multiplying that by 1,000. So it's multiplying web response, get verification code, extract as latency, which is a number in uh, seconds. And it's converting that into a transaction. Uh, so it's doing a transaction sign up to second script, uh, step 04, email latency. And then it's doing this uh, latency transaction set and it's putting the latency into it. So and that's what it's doing. Now I'll show you if I run through this, and then it does the submission. I'm gonna show you the submission too. So uh, there you go, it, it's done it. And uh, the last step is where it actually submits the confirmation code. And we can see here, it puts the CSRF in, and it puts the email address in, and it puts the verification code that it fetched. Now, when we do, when we run the script like this, so I've broken that one script up that was for each of those 50 users waiting for a few seconds to actually fetch the details. Now, if we run this, and we look at uh, transactions passed per second, there's a few extra steps involved because we actually have to coordinate the CSRF across scripts and we have to do extra email uh, interactions. But we can see that our transaction rates are gonna be much higher. So we've now got 50 users running and we were doing about seven or eight per second. And now with this mode, we're doing you know, more like 30 something per second, which is pretty good. While it's doing that, let's have a look at the transaction response times. Now this is working pretty well. Let's just scroll this up a little bit. So we can see we've got um, the get random identities is still doing the thing. Um, that step, um, script two, uh, step four, email latency, we can see our average email latency is 2.3 seconds. So that's pretty good. That's the time it's taking from when we hit the submit button um, to when an email's come, come back. It's not 
uh, related to how long it's taking for us to read the email. It's based on how long it's taking for the email to be re- actually be received on the back end because it's timed on the back end. So I reckon that's uh, pretty good. So let's just see how many we've been able to do in the previous test where we had one script that did everything. We did about 600 uh, requests. And in this one, we've got, um, we actually saved, we submitted uh, nearly 3,000. So that's a pretty big improvement. So that means that in the space of uh, an hour, if you had to sign up a whole lot of users in a hurry and you had a 50 user license, you could probably sign up about 100,000 people uh, to a website in an hour. And that means that that sets you up for success for doing whatever else you have to do with that application you might be testing so that you can then log in with those users and interact with the application under test as you need to. So I hope this is a good uh, introduction to Load Runner 2020 R2, uh, Service Pack 2, and um, uh, DevWeb scripts. Uh, I'll be doing several videos now on Load Runner 2020 Service Pack 2 with different aspects of it so, so that you can get a good uh, picture of what it's got. Have a great day.